All right, welcome back, everybody. You're watching the Esports Earnings Casters Invitational, and I believe we're joined by uh, Imre and Rotti to do a quick interview before their match. Now, this is a matchup that a lot of people are uh, anticipating, and uh, that I think is going to be very exciting. How are you guys feeling uh, before this one? The Frenchies can go first. Imre, yeah. I don't think any of my game has been excited ever. So. My playstyle is boring as fuck. Don't get your eye. So you're going full Korean on this one? Like, what is going on? I always go full Korean. <laughs> Except in game. <laughs> ah! No, oh, alright, Roddy. <laughs> yeah, except in game. Kev? Yeah, no, I, I think this is gonna, Obviously, it's gonna be a really tough match, I think, for me. Uh, it's kind of silly because a lot of people in the foreign scene, they really don't know him, race, so they look at it and they're like, lol, who the fuck is this guy? And then uh, I'm probably going to have a pretty tough series against him because, you know, he's like close to 6k MMR in Europe. So I think it's going to be really hard. But, you know, I've been chilling. I've been practicing quite a bit. I uh, beat a couple of really good Terrans last week, like Sol and the Muslims. So I guess if I can beat those guys, I should be able to do all right against Imre as well, hopefully. It's going to be hard, though. Harstam, any questions? Um, uh, for Imre, did you prepare uh, a, a lot specifically for Rotterdam? Or did you just kind of practice in general and just hope that you'll be all right? Or did you study some of his, his games and have something ah. special prepared? Yeah, I think I watched like 20 hours of his PVT. <laughs> really? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good luck, Kev. <laughs> uh, Imran, you got any of those white flags laying around? <laughs> uh, like, I, uh, I was served to your channel. I had to make it worth it somehow. So. You suck to my channel to watch my VODs? Of course. <laughs> what the fuck? Man, this guy is hardcore. This He's is not messing level. about. Yeah. I mean, I'm just... It's just great though for me that I recently uh, started playing offline as well on the barcode. Just broke into 6.4k MMR and completely different builds. So that's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least I've got that going for myself. Good luck in Challenger also for uh, Montreal with 6.4k. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks man, I appreciate it. Uh, do you guys have a message for one another just before uh, we get started here with this match? Roddy, go first. And a score uh, prediction as well. Uh, I think it's going to be 2-1 either way. Hopefully he doesn't play too dirty and we can just have a nice series. Uh, good luck and uh, perhaps see you in the grand final. Because I think that's possible. Yeah, there's a possible rematch in the grand final. And I think we're both like two underdogs for the world tournament but with the assumptions. So. This match doesn't matter too much if we can perform to the level we should. Anyway, Jen, Kev. So you, you made it. Wait, you, you guys didn't get the memo that the finals? I, I read everywhere the finals is going to be pig against Yogo. No. Did, did you ever <laughs> see fucking Yogo playing in a tournament before? He's going to choke. Come on, Todd. Todd, you should tell the Zerg how it is. They got a shot. You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Mm -mm. All right, Roddy wasn't leaving the discord, so I kicked him out. <laughs> 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 we don't need another mainer to get in there. All right, what a bunch of happy guys. Let's see, they're showing a lot of respect to one another. I was hoping for a bit more tr trash talk, but they're like, "Yeah, we're the best. We'll meet again in the finals." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> uh, they're, they're quite confident in their uh, in their play, I guess. Uh, Imra still small, talking some smack in the lobby chat as well. When do I get the death win? Because uh, yeah, yeah. Roddy took some time to join. I think we'll there. Yeah, Manners in as well. Yep. Apparently, I guess Roddy didn't want to join, so let's get going without waiting any further and find out if it's going to be a Protoss or Terran going uh, to the winner's match to face Roddy. I wonder how well Wildy actually would do against either of these guys, but it's pretty cool that we get to see them play first as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very glad that we get the, the Imre Rotterdam match first, and then after that, we, we go to the winner's match uh, after this one, right? Yeah, yeah, immediately. Yeah, so then we get to see, okay, the winner of this against Wildy. That would be pretty sick, actually. Uh, is it time for some impressions, for some intros? Uh, we don't want to... Ah. <laughs> is it too early? I actually, I actually, this morning I tried practicing them in front of the mirror. It went terrible. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sure if I uh, if if I'm ready yet. Only the French impression is on point. 
Only the French impression. Alright, let's point. do a French. <laughs> What's up, guys? In the right bottom corner, spawning is the orange Protoss player. It is Rotterdam! And in the left top, playing as the green Terran, it is Imbra. You sound like this one actor, I don't know his name, but like he sounds, I don't know, when he does an impression of the French, I think he might be British or something. And I always uh, thought he's like, it's overdone, you know, like, he overdoes it. And so do I, 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 Is it an uh, older actor or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know who I mean? I think in the in one of the Monty Python movies, they have this one guy who speaks in a very uh, exaggerated French accent. Yeah, he might be that. that. People always over exaggerate our accent. Come on, it doesn't sound that crazy. Even even though, like, I guess everybody does it <laughs> for like every language. Like when we went to Sweden, like people were like doing a, they were pretend speaking Swedish. You know, Apollo does that very well, actually. Can you can you do that? No, nah, no, nah, it's too hard. But they they. They have a lot of words where it's obvious. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of any, but yeah, I, like I can. It's very obvious, especially people from Stockholm, uh, if I recall correctly, do it a lot. Where they just, I think it's with the J, which they pronounce. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, like just like the way they talk, you know. Like uh, yeah. somebody, were, some people are doing impressions. Like I'm really bad at it, but it's like, uh, can you put the headset uh, on? Uh, like, so, <laughs> so, you know, kind of like that. Yeah, the headset. You see, I'm really bad at it, but yeah, you know. It's it's interesting nice. how they speak. I'm surprised actually that Swedish folks can speak English that well just because like the way you when you speak Swedish is like so different. Mm -hmm. Seems like they're able to like completely tune that out and take it as like a whole new language, whereas the French can't. Uh, the, the Germans are not that great either at it. Like a lot a lot of the Germans that we have now are actually quite good, but if you have one of these guys with a, a thick German accent over in English, it's beautiful. <laughs> like Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, with like Kung Fu Panda, for example. Yeah, he, he has a very thick German accent. And has you ups? Uh, did he? Has you ups? He has like a few things, like where, he, he, like he has a great English, but there's a few things where like he still sounds like mm, really yeah. like German. Yeah. He, he like he kind of rolls his R, but not as like you know a Spanish version, as like the German version. Yeah. Like I remember, like we're in a the restaurant, and he's like, "Can I get a carbonara?" Something like that. <laughs> so I'm like, I was like, "Wow, okay, well, next level German right there." Yeah, a great guy. Imre going for some widow mines there, and it's gonna be dropping him, I'm sure. He said he watched 20 hours of Rodis PVT, which is crazy. I'm not sure if he was bluffing, but he didn't seem. I don't to be think he was. Either. Yeah, I don't think so. Either. Roddy streams all the time, so I always thought that if I met Roddy in a tournament, I'd definitely watch his stream a bunch, learn from it, and then crush him in a tournament. <laughs> Which will I'm happen. I'm not sure if uh, going with a mind drop is the best thing to do against Roddy's build. I feel like Roddy is pretty safe against uh, most stuff. He's I counting on the live tournament jitters, man. Uh, you know, those are real. Yesterday I was actually pretty nervous. Yeah, playing as Rifkin, you know, quaking in my boots. <laughs> uh, it was nice to start with Rifkin, I guess. You had the, you know, most of the nervous nervousness was gone after that. Yeah, or well, even though after I lost to uh, Jeff, especially after I fall behind in game one, I was like, oh my god, please no. <laughs> you start sweating, it's like, oh my yeah. god, mother it, god. Actually, yeah. you know what? Yesterday was really warm. I was like dying at home and the thing is like it's very hard to open the window because there's like street magicians and stuff and I'm worried the mic will pick it up. So today I took a little, like, I mean it's raining so there's no street magicians but I took a bit of a risk, I opened the window and then like just now before when we were in the break and before coming back live there was there was a couple of super supporters like football supporters outside because there's like two pubs. They was like I'm blue da -da -da -da. I was like oh my god <laughs> like if they're doing this while the stream is on I'm gonna have to close the window again and die of a uh, heat stroke. <laughs> uh, thankfully, they stop now. Uh, you live in a, a, a great part of uh, what is it, Cologne? Right? Yeah, yeah. There's two Irish pubs downstairs. <laughs> Needless to <laughs> say, it's it's not quiet at all. Yeah. Kinda nice. Oh, nice Ooh, little, uh, cheeky. We don't mind Deutsch. Yeah. Sending the observer over now as well, so he's gonna get that one out of the way. And we see a tank being started for him. Actually, yeah. a second tank being started yeah. for him. So we build. A Viking? I'm not sure why he built a Viking. 
Like, I don't think Rotti ever opens up with Stargate, right? He always opens up like this. And tanks aren't that great against this build either, so... <laughs> I'm not sure why yeah, It's would funny. Play. He might think, like, uh... I don't know, like, sometimes you want to do something, and but then, like, you remember, like, you know, the two hours or more that you watched of, like, a sick Terran playing, and you're like, oh, you made a Viking there, that was really smart, because he caught a prism, and then you just make it. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't make sense with your build and what you're facing. Yeah. Well, another dodge. And Rod is on points. By the way, guys, yeah. he, he's streaming. If you want to check him out, if you want to check his first person point of view. It is actually. Uh, uh, Rotti has some nice map control. So I think this is the kind of game Rotti likes to play. He uh, sees everything. He has a bunch of observers across the map. Gets his three bases up, stays with three gas, double forge, charge done. And he sees the tanks. And he's like, ah. He can just get a lot of charge loss against them. Yeah, but Imre is going to do a two base. And what worries me is that Rotti might overprobe. Like, if he knew right now that Imre is still on two base, I think Roddy would stop making probes. He wouldn't take the gases on the third base and he would just make units. Yeah, but I, I feel like that's what Roddy is going to do. No? Like yeah, actually, he yeah, he's making more gates. He hasn't even taken the fourth gas on his natural, which is really smart in his case. I, I don't think he ever does that. He's, uh, if you take a look at his resources right now, he still has 400 gas in the bank, so that's enough yeah. to start 2-2. Two, two. After 1-1 one, one finishes, if you go so, uh, as zealot heavy as Roddy does, you only get five stalkers. You don't actually need the gas. He sees these tanks on sieging. It's three siege tanks. It's a, a decent chunk of marines. But I feel like with charge mod, uh, maybe a sentry and a couple of stalkers to delay this incoming push, this is actually looking quite good for Rotti. This is kind of the build he wants to play against. Yeah, I think he knows what's happening at this point because uh, he stopped making probes. He's only making units. He's getting more gates right now. I don't think he should start 2 2 even. He just needs to crush this attack and then he's going to be fine. So he's going to be whopping in a ton of Zealots, which are going to be great against those tanks. And uh, he needs... wait, is there a Templar Archives? No, he doesn't. He needs Archons though, like even though it's just three gas, because he's only making Zealots. And he starts 2-2! Two, two. Yeah, Roti is... Prepare, uh, preparing for life after the push already, but I'm not yeah. sure if he should, because there might not be life after the push after all. 1-1 uh, one, one is finished though, and he has a sentry, so those Marines won't do too much damage. Oh, interesting blink forward from Rotti. Charge slots going, Guardian Shield being activated as well. And Rotti is charging in. Oh, a bit of a move command there with the Stalkers. Uh, a, a suicidal blink forward, I would say. Yeah, this was and the then, worst fight you could ever take, I feel, by Rotti. Yeah, he this, went after the fight. tanks were already sieged. Oh, but an another big warp in of Zealous. There's no more medevacs alive because Rotti sniped all of them. One tank going down, second tank going down as well. And these Marines without medevacs are extremely weak, so Rotti might be able to clean it up after all. There's still two tanks remaining, but there's not a single medevac on the map, so every stim is going to be felt by Imbra. Yeah, Rotti needs to chrono boost uh, his robo and maybe two of his gates, not the forges. Like, these upgrades are irrelevant for all of these fights. And then, I mean, if he dies, then he's not gonna save him. Yeah, but I, I feel like Rotti is kind of stabilizing right yeah. now. What does Imbra really have to push into this overcharge? He has one tank, uh, two Liberators, but Liberators can't shoot pilots. He can just activate three more overchargers and stall enough time. Rotti is on 11 gate right now, so every single warpin is going to be another 11 Zealots. Oh, I like this. Army. He's long distance mining from the fourth base, by the way, instead of mining too much from the main. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But the income is just massively in favor of Roddy here, so and the more ten the more time Imre waits, the worse it's gonna get for him, but he's still uh, setting up a really strong push here. These liberators in particular are gonna be hard to deal with, they are forcing a lot of stalkers. But there's yeah, just yeah, so many zealots on the ground that it's looking super scary. Um, Roddy kinda needs to wait for 2-2, 5 more seconds until 2-2 is finished, with, combined with the Guardian shield, those zealots will be extremely tanky. Roddy actually deciding to give up this base. Not sure if that's the correct call, but it's the call he makes. Um, it's halfway done. He does have better upgrades. Yeah, he has 2-2 two, two now. Position. Yeah. Like, this so is going to be sick having 2-2. Two, two. He has less army, but I mean, the army of Imre here, especially when it's not siege, doesn't look that scary. Imre is still yeah. going for this. I think he can fly his main orbital to a new base as well. So like this push never really gets that much weaker production-wise, except during the time that uh, the CC is flying away. Yeah, correct. And there's two more Liberators on the way now. And with four Liberators, this is getting into the, the dangerous area for Rotti. He really should try to break it before those two extra Liberators manage to stand up. Good stim uh, by Imra, killing a lot of probes. And here goes Rotti, moving forward. Blinks forward with the Stalkers. Targets down the Liberators. Tanks going down, and those Zealots are absolutely eating up those Marines. The 2-2 two -two charcoals are so extremely powerful against this pure Marine army at this point. And Rotti's cleaning up here. 
Himra is losing everything, he's trying to trade as much as he can before this attack ends. And because Roddy re-expanded elsewhere, he still got full saturation on the other base that he took in the meantime. He saved a lot of probes, he did lose a bunch. And Roddy immediately restarts probe production off the back of this. It looks like and he might want to counter-attack. <laughs> yeah. He wants his upgrades, man. That's like some next level creator uh, upgrades there. Yeah, but I don't think Roddy needs to attack at all. Uh, he could get a prism, maybe try some dropping action, but attacking yeah. is not the way forward at this point. And it Templar uh, Archives. Yeah. Yeah, Where is the it? Templar Archives getting six gas. Uh, that, that should, those should all be priority over attacking. Yeah, here here comes a prism. So I feel like Roddy does want to put on some kind of pressure. Maybe just uh, kind of show his army in the front and drop in the main base, try to take, out, take down some of the production or something. But Roddy doesn't really need to, need to do anything at this point. Right, let's see. He's just gonna head on back home, realizing he can't really attack just yet. Still not taking the extra gases. I'm really surprised by how much those are delayed, but I guess he's still pretty confident with the army that he has and having 3 3 on the way. That's still being chrono boosted. That's gonna be. He's gonna have 3 3 against 1 1 eventually, which is super scary. Yeah, he, for sure. Imre is still uh, trying to upgrade, though. At least he didn't give up on that. Yeah, plus, yeah, plus 2 coming in, but. I mean, if you're down three upgrades in total, uh, it, it won't matter too much, I feel like. Like, if you... He, he should really... Ah, uh, he actually has the second key, but I didn't see that. So it's gonna get 2-2. Two, two, but 3-3 three, three will be finished before Imrus 2-2 two, two will be done. So if Roti manages to hit a timing there, this should be very powerful and almost impossible for Imrus to stop, I feel like. Especially in combination with the Prism, uh, which is going to the natural of Imrus right now. If you look at uh, Imrus' army, you think he has a chance? That's what Roddy has. Mm, like the moment 3-3 three, three finishes, I think this army gets absolutely decimated. Or when it's on siege, like right now. Uh, great blinking by Roddy, and this is looking very, very dark for Imra right now. Managed to borrow two of his Widow Mines, will get... Nah, not, not even decent shots. Like, they just got one unit each, so... Bad shots, I would say, on the Widow Mines. All these Marines are super stimmed, they're low on health. Two Medivex flying in right now, needs to stim again. All of the Marines have health already. And Rotti is just up 50 supply, up 4 upgrades. Big drop in the natural of Imra as well, killing 11 SCVs. Uh, he did lose the Prism, I do believe, but Rotti is just uh, doing great this game. He's really getting into the zone, adding a robotics yeah. bay, a second robotics facility, getting those extra gases right now, 3 gas being built at the same time. I feel like Rotti is in a great position. He did this right too, I think, like he. Woke up, played a bunch of warm-up games, and now he's already kind of like in the zone, as you're saying. Didn't waste any time, you know, messing around. Played even some more warm-up during the first series when that was going on. Now Imre rescans the initial third base, which is now fourth base, that was retaken. And I think he realizes uh, that there is he needs to have some sense of urgency here and try and make something happen soon, because Roddy's production is blowing up out of control, and he's going to go into a disruptor production of the back of this as well. Oh, actually Colossus. Oh, it cancelled, okay. Yeah. Uh, we see a little bit of a run by being set up by Rotterdam. Five zealots to the natural, main army to the third. Uh, just as Imre is moving out, and maybe Imre sees some kind of opportunity here for a base trade, but it's going to be so hard because Rotti's army is so powerful. The units he can warp in at home are going to be so good with these, these upgrades. A couple of overcharges going down on Rotti's fourth base will still lose it, most likely, but not before we're doing uh, some damage. What actually decides to go back? What do you think of that? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I don't. You don't want to base trade against Terran, right? So, right. might be like his motivation. He might be worried that things go really bad, but obviously, he will be there very late. But I think he should be able to defend against this, even though Imre is taking the high ground here, trying to set up in the area. There's just so much army for Roddy that I don't think even those Widow Mines should change anything. Yeah, I don't think so either. The moment your opponent has as many zealots as you have marines, that's normally a sticky situation to be. A nice surround there, coming with 10 zealots from the bottom as well, and Rotti absolutely crushing Imra's army. Uh, Imra has 8 marines, a medevac, and a dream left, but I think this dream is about to end. Imra is about to wake up, and it's not the good kind of waking up. Well, yeah, definitely is not. Everything's dying on the other side of the map. There's a couple of Widowmans left over. Roti's starting to blast away with the F2 there. He's gonna have to, to clean up those mines. That have been really the only annoying thing uh, that he's had to face so far. 
Every marine on the ground and tanks have been cleaned up pretty easily. Oh my god. The Widow Mines. Where are they going? Oh, I thought he was going to go in the middle line. Yeah, She's a very juicy one. Tries to borrow oh, they the might get the observer! Well, he does, but it, that won't matter. And in this case, Roddy wins game number one quite convincingly. I thought it might be closer, but Imre went for a build that just got scouted and crushed. Yeah, it was. Uh, it looked pretty good for Imre at one point. After the first fight, I really felt like Imre had a chance, but he, he didn't have any medevacs with his army, and if you can't stim, then those units aren't as good. I, I was really picturing um, Roti just overmaking probes and uh, maybe being in a lot of trouble. Especially, I think that fight he kind of butchered it, right? Like the first one. Yeah, I think so. He could have delayed it a little bit for sure, but in the end, it doesn't even change anything because he just had so much anyway. So it's a good play here out of Roti, definitely. And the Imre, I mean, he tried the two base, probably thinking it was going to be uh, giving him a good chance, but. Uh, you have to wonder, right, against Roti who plays charge lot and upgrades, how good can a tank push like this be? Yeah, I, I feel like it's not the the correct decision there by Roti. Uh, I mean, uh, by Imra to go yeah. for a tank push against that, that many charge lots. You know, uh, like if you study 20 hours of Roti and this is what you come up with, like... <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing, you know? If you were a Terran, what would you come up with against Roti style? I, I think the best thing is to open uh, something rather greedy, something like triple CC, uh, because Roti plays quite safe, and he's very focused on, on on trading with you and getting the upgrade lead and then trading in uh, small task forces all around the map, basically. So if you just make one massive push where you have two two upgrades as the Terran, I think you should almost always be able to beat it because Roti's army doesn't really get that, that much stronger after yeah. 140 supply, I would say just keeps getting weaker and his, his Colossus transition is almost always a bit late so I feel like that would be a lot more powerful than what Imra showed here. I don't think tanks are the way forward at all. Can you turn up your input volume? You can right click my name and uh, in, in I Discord. I can? Yeah and you can... Let's see. Oh yeah. Go say something. Hello? Okay, I should be better. Hopefully, let me know, guys, in the chat. Let's see. I think they're ready. Let's go. Damn, it's starting to be noisy outside, man. I feel like uh, I'm gonna have to close the windows soon. You heard anything? I don't think it picks. Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't pick up anything. I feel like. I have like a specific microphone that really doesn't pick up much, other than you know what's around it. But sometimes outside it gets so loud that it doesn't matter anyway. It still picks it up, and then that's when. I have to turn my apartment into an oven and close the window. <laughs> I have a portable AC as well, which, I mean, you still have to open the window with it because you can't. I can't. I couldn't install it properly through the wall. But anyway, game number two here. Starting in the bottom right hand side, we're gonna have El Roti, and in the top left hand side, his opponent, the Frenchman from Ogaming, it's Imre. I feel like Imre. He's one of the guys that took these tournaments most seriously and like practiced a lot for it and like he's very ambitious you know yesterday he was posting on Team Liquid non-stop in the live report thread and all that like you can tell it means a lot to him but at the same time he's one guy that hasn't played much in big tournaments like this you know in front of like a lot of viewers he did play in uh, the casters cup of O gaming that they had once with all French casters and I think he won one of them against Yogo in the grand final so he kind of has an idea of what it's like, but now, you know, it's the biggest stage now. He's facing Roti, one of the most popular and famous commentators in StarCraft 2 and in esports. Yes. It's a little different. Uh, I, I like this build a lot more already from Imra, by the way. Opening CC first, getting a lot of money, getting a, a big bioforce is what you want. But there's one, one little trick that Roti does different from every single Protoss in the world. And that's that he gets the the cyber core before the nexus and he chrono boosts out a stalker and the moment he sees a command center first there's going to be one stalker across the map and then a second stalker and if you're not used to playing against this those two stalkers can be very annoying because all you have is slow marines yeah, no, no marauder so that that's something that Imra should be careful about but if you really studied that much of Roti he should know what's coming for him yeah I mean those Roti builds right it's like there are only so many of them, and he's known for doing these aggressions. Even though, now, as of late in Legacy of the Void, it's been a lot less. Like, it almost used to be, like, you know, the standard build of Roddy in uh, Heart of the Swamp to go for, like, this stalker push and all that. 
I haven't particularly seen Roddy do uh, pylon rushes actually either. No, yeah, he's, he's I don't think he's quite a, a pylon rusher. He's more of the just the stalker control. Yeah, Warcraft 3 micro, man. Yeah. Hey, you talked about my Warcraft 3 micro yesterday when I was fighting stalkers against stalkers against secret control on this map, but. You know, it like. Wasn't uh, quite there, was it? No, but like, <laughs> I feel like it's worthless with, uh, when, uh, you know, like, they are already there, the stalkers, and even if I pull them back and come back. He's just gonna target it with uh, other stalkers. So if I did that, if I pull back my injured stalkers, I'd only be counting on him really messing up and being targeting one of them. But usually they get like two volleys. They were like still like four against four stalkers at least. So they they die like super fast, right? Uh, no, so I that was my reasoning. I think right. if you uh, if he was worth it, and also like Warcraft three micro, like wa Warcraft three units take like five minutes to die, so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> like it's hard to mess up the micro. Yeah, that's true. I guess. Okay, yeah, I Imra did prepare, gets a bunker, which is the correct response to what Rotti does. And uh, yeah, Im Imra is uh, it's looking good this game, I feel like. I wonder what Rotti's response is to CC first. Does he get uh, the, the, the same kind of build order? Does he get a faster third base, like uh, we see most players do? Maybe really quick third? Sure. Yeah, this is, this is what I would suspect, but he's still getting the blink. Uh, <coughs> And I feel like Rotti is one of those guys that just likes to do one build against everything, no matter what. I mean, change he will change little things, but the, the 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 skeleton of the build will remain the same. So yeah, yeah we're seeing the Robo, and then most likely two extra gates, and then just the third base, like it does every single game. He's trying to, to achieve something on the other side of the map, but the bunker is still there. I mean, three stalkers against the bunker, that's not going to work out for the stalkers. How do you like ODC in PvT actually? Uh, ODC in PvT, I think it's a, a relatively fair map, I would say. It's, uh, the rush distance isn't too long, which I guess is a, a good for Terran, but there's not a lot of spots to drop in. Uh, it's quite easy to defend. Okay, there's only the natural, really, and the main. Uh, you can do some run bites into the natural, but I think in general it's a, a pretty good map, I would say, for uh, Protoss. Gold base being taken, and Imre has a marine down there checking out that other potential third base. So I wonder if he actually checks that and if he sees it. Like, I feel like usually one of the best ways to play against a, a far away base like this is to try to hit that third base and the main base with drops at the same time. But I haven't seen too many players do that super well. Yeah, I, I think that would be uh, one of the better ways to deal with it for sure. Just anything that can pull him out of position. Even a, a little push that ends up under the gold, like with a liberator or something, it's so hard to defend from the high ground. Uh, they get some widow mines just beneath the gold and then shoot the probes that are mining. That could be very powerful as yeah. well. Uh, Imre is very scared, by the way, of getting a bunker on the high ground. It's because uh, uh, well. I think he fully realized it's a blink opener and he didn't see the third base, so he might be like, is he doing uh, an old school seven gates on two bases? Yeah, you're, you're probably right, actually. Yeah, that's he's a, he's also getting a second uh, turret, and it's in a DT position. So he's really scared of DTs as well. Uh, he salvages the bunker on the high ground now, throws on two extra barracks. So he's going to go five wreck to try and punish uh, what Rotti is doing. But Imra doesn't really see anything. He doesn't see the third base. He isn't sure what Rotti is doing. You can assume he's going charge hold again, but he doesn't really know for sure. And it's always nice to get that confirmation, even if you do have a good idea what your opponent likes to do, it's nice to get that confirmation. Really nice build from Roddy, I have to say. Like, I don't think he... I've particularly seen him do that on stream, but like, he's kept on gases a lot, stayed on two gas a long time, to the gold base, and then only takes the third gas and stays very heavy on charge loss. I love that. I think I'm going to use that, man. Yeah, Super sick. and uh, what, one of the cool things that Roddy does this game is that he wants to go for some kind of push himself because he's not getting the forges. Normally we see him get the double forges after either the three gates yeah. or after the six gates, but this time he's going up to how many gates does he actually have? He has 10 gates, well, 10 gates on, on the way at least. So he'll be uh, able to warp in a lot of charge hold without upgrades, but that's going to be very powerful and it's going to be in his advantage, I feel like. Yeah, I'm surprised there isn't even one forge here with this. Nah, I, think, I think Rotti's goal is just to stop the initial push and then counter-attack immediately with a prism. We already see a prism being built for him. Just Oh, a second prism even coming out right now. So, yeah, that's definitely what Rotti's plan is. And Imre is still trying to scout. I think by now he should start realizing that there is a gold. Yeah, he moves there, sees no third. He's still not checking for the gold, which is fully saturated. Look at that yeah. Rotti face with the beanie, man. 
That day call is sick. I, I feel like uh, Imra might be scared of a two base all in now. Which would actually help Imra a lot, even though he's playing against a three base all in. But being defensive right now is what Imra really wants to do. He needs to get one one done and just stay defensive. He didn't see a third base and he saw a lot of army out on the map for Rotti. And this is the kind of position Rotti would want to fight in. Uh, Two Widow Mines, decent hit coming in. Rotti blinking forward, targeting down all the Medivex once again. Where's the War Prism for uh, the reinforcements? It's not with the army, it went to the natural. Oh my god. Man. And he donated Rotti. off his army. What did he do? GG. Wow. Here I was praising the build, and then Rotti does like a weird attack. He, w he got overconfident. He probably felt like he had to fight, but there was no third base. He could have just sat back, used the Prism to harass. Like even though yeah, that one got caught, like it doesn't mean you have to engage, right? Like he just gave Imre the dream fights on his side of the map. Yeah, but he he had no upgrades. He needed to, I felt like. Like uh, he was he was pretty much on a time. Yeah, but he he went to prism, remember? So even if one gets caught, he could send the other one yeah, at the top side of the map, send it in the main, because like you really need that prism to work. If it gets shut down, you're in trouble because he has no upgrade, like you said. Yeah. Right. We're gonna be on sequencer up next. <coughs> Yeah, this should give uh, Imra some nice confidence as well. I feel like this is really what you want to do against Roddy. Just get a big bio force. Yeah, but it felt like Roddy lost this more than Imre won it, right? Because if Roddy had just been sitting oh, home, yeah, yeah, for sure, for he sure, would have been very sure. successful in this game. Yeah, I, f I feel like Roddy uh, is just going to go back to the double force next game. Uh, and Roddy is sometimes stilt, so hopefully it doesn't happen to him here. I, I, I don't hope so either. Can be hard, man. Starcraft is a cruel game like that. It definitely is. Sequencer map number three. How do you think uh, about Sequencer in PvT? It's it's a it's a long map. Uh, it has nice. You can get nice map control as the Protoss player. So I feel like it would be a good map for uh, for Protoss. I'm not sure how Rotti's style fares on this because the, there's quite a lot of chokes and Rotti really depends on having these engagements where he can come from multiple sides with yeah. the Zealots. Uh, kind of get a, a concave around the Terran army, just surround the Terran army properly. And the entrances on this map are very small, so I'm not sure how well Rotti's style does on here, but the, the long rush distance will definitely help his build, I feel like. His build is a is really dependent on the upgrades of course so every extra few seconds you can get by your opponent traveling towards you is a uh, uh, our seconds that are very useful for Rotti. okay sounds good let's find out who uh, wins this series here and jump into the next game it's now one in one and uh in the top right hand side is going to be Rotti playing as the orange protos orange because it's the color of uh netherlands or yeah, what I think so. Actually, he's uh, he's quite uh, patriotic. Yeah, is is it the color of uh, Fire Nord as well or no? No, 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 no. That's red and white. Okay. And the bottom left hand side is Imre playing in the green, trying to be stealth. You know, in Warcraft Three, green was really OP. Like, uh, if the opponent didn't use the thing, where like on the minimap they see you as red, like you'd be super stealth as green. Well, was that the reason why uh, people picked green? I thought yellow was also good, no? Yeah, it yellow could be on some maps, but uh, no, actually, no, yellow wasn't that great, I think. Uh, okay. In in Good. tournaments, like WC3L and stuff, so like the equivalent of WCS, so to speak, in Warcraft 3, I think the colors that we are asked to play with very often was red and yellow. Actually, th there is a very funny story with that, with which Roddy has already told uh, many times on stream. It's like this one time I had to play against a player, and he was like known for being, you know, like BM slash not really caring about anything and like he wanted to play with green and I wanted two as well and there was two greens there was like a light green and a dark green and then we both ended up picking green and the referee told us if you don't change color you'll get a penalty point and then penalty point equalized to like you know losing a percentage of the prize money right so then we were like screw you we don't care <laughs> just give us the penalty points which is really silly so like we, we got the penalty points played with green and I, ho I won the whole tournament for like 15k and then I, I got like a huge fine because of this, because I played with another color and got a penalty <laughs> point. It's so sick, man. <laughs> yeah, you got like a 5% off or something? I don't know. I don't remember how much it was, but I know like if you win 15k and then you have a percentage taken away, it's like yeah. not very good. 
<laughs> Sick man. So like, who, who was the player you played against? Elake Duck. Uh, you know him? I, I, no, I don't think so. He was a notorious Warcraft 3 player, known for like spamming in caps lock and stuff when he was losing. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he has <laughs> he has an epic game against SK Insomnia where he's spamming for like I don't know what it is, like fifteen, twenty minutes non stop in caps lock while still playing a game. And then it's like a tournament game and he ends up chopping trees down and trying to hide buildings inside in a forest. <laughs> in a, in an actual tournament game. So sick. Well, he was elf I assume then? No no he was orc. Oh. Ah okay. Well, it was the old times, though, uh, a long time ago. I think, like, I don't remember if Blade Master was, like, fully part of the meta yet, but yeah, that guy was definitely uh, one of the outspoken guys in Waka 3. Oh, Roti is uh, changing it up, by the way. He's getting a, a proxy Stargate this game. I haven't seen this before. You think Tilt, or...? Nah, no, I don't think so. And this is this is looking like a push, actually, a proxy Stargate. Uh, so it's most likely going to be one Oracle into Void Ray. Imra is getting the safety engineering bay. Uh, and he still has an SCV on the other side of the map as well, so he can scout into the main base of Rotli to see what's going on there. I wonder what it's going to be. You think we'll see straight Void Ray or an Oracle first? Okay, it's going to be an Oracle first. I think that's the, the wise decision. Yeah, but then uh, does he go like mass gates and uh, some Void Rays, or is there a transition here? I wonder. Because like it's interesting to do this in the last game as well. Like so many players nowadays, I feel like they've completely changed it up. You know, back in the old days, everybody was trying to play safe, and then you got a couple of guys like MC just taking every single risk, cutting every corner, and doing every single all-in in the book. And then ever since the landscape of StarCraft has changed forever, like people are not afraid to take gambles anymore. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's a lot more common to see uh, all-ins now. Oh, Oracle putting in some uh, some nice work, getting four SCVs already. Second Oracle, I wouldn't have minded to, to see a Void Raid there. I'm curious what he's going to do with a second Oracle, because there's just going to be turrets in both bases at that point. So I'm not sure how useful that Oracle is going to be. What did Im receive with his scouting SCV? He saw two more gates going down. Uh, and he saw with his Marine that there's no third base. And yeah. now there's three more gates going down for Roti. So it's going to uh, be seven total. Yeah, seven gates total and a third oracle. And he made right? a sentry immediately, so he's going to have one guardian shield for everything. So I guess he can just swap in stalkers and zealots and then walk in there. Yeah. And it, it, once the bunker goes down, what does uh, Imra really have for units? He has 18 marines, but if he stims them once, like the, these oracles, adapts and... Oh, actually it's zealots, not adapts. All these units are just going to be able to slice up these marines really well. Rodin needs to be careful to not lose any oracles right now. Third oracle being shown, which should be a bit of a tell. Normally you never see three oracles being yeah. built. If I was Imra, I would start building a second bunker right now. And a turret at the front even, maybe. Yeah. You know what's sick yeah. about this? Roddy said in an interview, I hope Imra doesn't play too dirty. <laughs> 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 then he's the one taking a, a page of the great book of Protoss builds. Alright, here we go. Zealots and Stalkers are going to move in their sentry as well. Imra tries to evacuate, but Forcefield lands on the ramp. That was the only one force field that he has available. Could set up a stasis ward, but he's still gonna kill a lot of these units there. Yeah, lo loses one oracle, uh, flies it into the marines accidentally. Killed seven SCVs already, doesn't have a second force field like you mentioned, but he just goes up the ramp, he goes all out. There is a stim though, loses one oracle for free, second oracle not going down, but does Roti really have enough units to take this kind of fight? I, I'm not sure if he has. He had he's already killed a lot of SCVs, I'm not sure if he maybe should have fought there, but I guess he cleans up and trades, and off the back of this, Roddy has a way better uh, economy, even though like it's not that great, he's 38 against 31. Yeah, and he, he doesn't really have <coughs> a way out. I feel like once these two medifacts uh, come together with these marines, what does Roddy really have that can contest them? Combat shield marines with plus one and a couple of medifacts against uh, 14 slow zealots. Now, zealots are great. This is when you go twilight, right? So you go for for, uh, for charge. Yeah, but I think I think it's a little too late at this point. He, he really needs... Uh, maybe get a sentry. Yeah, a couple of sentries on the bottom of the ramp, then a twilight. Maybe get a forge or double forge even at home. Like, he needs to transition out of this. Oh, oh wow. Deciding to stim. I didn't and think yeah, he was going to go. Yeah, these plus one marines are doing so much damage to these zealots and 
Imr is just taking down Zealot after Zealot, dropping a couple more Marines down onto the low ground as well. That might have been a bit over eager, uh, as he's losing a lot of those Marines, but he does clean up in the end. And now he can just throw a couple of mules down. He is practically uh, equal count in SEVs. Decent production. Roti keeps trying, warps in six more Zealots and a Stalker. Hamer hey, is overextending with his Marines, he's not picking up anything. He could have saved so many of those with nice pickups. Medivax are actually going to heal a lot of these SCVs, which are taking the Zealots head on here right now. Roti is still trying to score some SCV kills. Gets a Medivac as well, and then pulls out. He's still whopping. in! Yeah, uh, charge starting just now, but that's going to take uh, a minute and a half for and sure Roti to And Roti starts the third. Yeah, I, th I think that's a good call. Maybe a third, maybe one or two forges. I think that would be uh, the only way out here for Roti, really. There's two mines right now, so he needs a new oracle to deal with those mines. But even then, it's going to be so difficult to yeah. do anything with uh, the amount of units that he has there. With the with the upgrades that Imra has. Imra already has 1-1. One, one. I'm surprised Imra didn't drop Widow Mines, actually, against this. Imagine he drops one Widow Mine per mineral line. It's like... As a Protoss, I know it's like the worst thing I feel I can face at this stage in the game. Yeah, th that actually probably would be game over, as there's no real uh, real detection for Rotterdam except for the one Oracle that just finished. Uh, I, I feel like uh, Rotti sees the drop at home and decides to turn back around, but he's not going to be in time to save this, right? Well, he can buy time maybe with the Stalker and uh, Zealots there. Yeah, he's gonna uh, chase it away. Okay. Rotti needs to take the gases maybe at his natural, even though. Okay, now he starts with Phoenix, so he wants to deal with his medivacs with a couple air units. There's just so many Widow Mines and he has no detection though. Yeah, and he... Oh, he there's one Oracle. No there's one single Oracle. Where is it? Oh, there. Yeah, I don't, upgrades I don't think he can go for, like maybe with off the back of one forge, but... Oh, he's gonna try to counter run by with Zealots. This is either gonna fail really hard or win somehow. That actually is a really good move. I think this is one of the only ways that he can make something work. He needs to do a lot of eco damage with those four zealots, though. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. Yeah, Marine's taking care of those zealots, whilst the SCV pool. And now Imris moving in himself. Six Widow Mines, Argon Kuburo, two Liberators sieging up. Snipes the Mothership Core, snipes the Phoenix, snipes the Oracle as well. Does get the rev Revelation off, but these mines might just prove to be a little bit too much for Rotterdam. Uh, oh, actually, no. maybe not. Yeah, he tagged them with the Oracle before that died, so he actually cleans up. What is going on, man? Roddy fought back. I thought he was dead here. Yeah, and now Roddy has a third base. There is a little bit of a drop in his main base. I'm not sure how he's planning on dealing with that. Uh, losing a, a bunch of probes already. Does he have a warp in ready? He does. But he doesn't have a lot of money, so... 11 probes going down there for Roddy. Roddy feels like he's been put in an all-in position. Decides to go across the map. Uh, he rebuilt an Oracle, he's rebuilding an, a Phoenix as well right now. And this this is going to be it for Roti. Let's see, Imre reacts a little bit late with his team pack there. He's gonna pull SCVs right away, but a lot of them are blocking one another. Medivac being targeted, but two more come out behind this. And Imre is gonna be healing up everything, and he's taking a huge supply lead. GG gets called. And Imre will take the series here with a 2-1 score. And propel himself into the winner's match where he will face Wadi. Nice matchup, man. Yeah, it was uh, was a nice game. Different games than what I was expecting, for sure. I didn't think they will like really try to get into each other's heads like this and play uh, that aggressive. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, I, I think Imra a after the first game, he realized that he just needed to take down a notch, just relax and let Roti kind of come at him. That's what he did the last, the, the final two games, and yeah, I, I felt like. Uh, I don't think Rotti is too happy with the the games that he played, uh, especially the, the 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 last the last two. I would yeah. say. Yeah, uh, he didn't have to move up the ramp. It's so weird. Like it's easy to say as a spectator again, but I've done this mistake many times where like I kind of throw. It's pretty tough. Yeah. So France doing pretty well so far. Yeah, uh, maybe a, a second group winner for France uh, coming in. There's only one man now uh, in between a second yeah. French uh, group winner. That's Wardy. It's going to be the next match. Wardy against Imra, or Group D of the Esports Earnings Casters Invitational. 
we're gonna head to a break and uh, in a few minutes i think around five minutes we'll come back with the ne next series it's gonna be wadi against Maynard. so see you guys very soon <laughs>